Hello, welcome to this tutorial video in which uh, I have described the anatomy of uh, the ruminant small intestine. After going through this tutorial video, you'll be able to identify and name the different parts of uh, the small intestine. You will also be able to explain the positions, directions and attachments of the various parts of the small intestine. In addition, you'll be able to explain the blood supply of uh, the small intestine. And uh, finally, you'll be able to answer questions based on the learning outcomes of this uh, tutorial video. The small intestine is a long, narrow, folded or coiled tube of uh, the gastrointestinal tract that uh, connects the stomach to the large intestine, including the cecum. And uh, it is uh, the region where most uh, digestion and absorption of food takes place. And uh, in ruminant animals, the small intestine is uh, located or housed in a space known as uh, the supraumental recess. And uh, the small intestine consists of uh, three parts, that is uh, the duodenum, the jejunum and the ileum. So in the subsequent slides, I will describe uh, the anatomy of uh, the different parts of uh, the small intestine. I will now describe uh, the anatomy of uh, the first segment of the small intestine, which is uh, the duodenum. I will describe it in terms of uh, its different parts, the position and uh, the relations, as well as uh, its attachments to various structures. The duodenum begins at uh, the pylorus, which is uh, basically the end of uh, the abomasum. It is uh, variable in length, that is uh, the duodenum. And uh, this depends on the animal species. For example, in the cow or the ox, it is about uh, one meter in length. The duodenum has uh, three parts, and these parts uh, include uh, the cranial part, the descending part, as well as uh, the ascending part. The cranial part passes dorsally to the visceral surface of the liver, where it forms uh, an S-shaped uh, cave, which is also known as uh, the sigmoid uh, flexure. And uh, the common bile duct enters uh, the second cave of this sigmoid flexure at about 60 centimeters from the pylorus in the case of the ox and uh, about 25 to 40 centimeters in the case of uh, the sheep and also the goat. The descending part of the duodenum runs uh, dosocodally, almost reaching the tuber coxa. Then the caudal flexure is uh, just the caudal continuation of uh, the descending part of the duodenum before it connects into the ascending part of the duodenum and the ascending part of the duodenum is attached to the descending colon caudally by the duodenocolic ligament now the picture on your right is uh, of uh, the abdominal organs of uh, the goat which have been removed from the abdomen and uh, placed in such a way as to approximately represent the way the the structures would sit in situ or in real life but note that these organs, uh, together with the goat cadaver from which uh, they were obtained, was uh, fixed in formalin or it was embalmed. So the color may be different from what it would look like in real life. So from this we can see, we can identify various structures of uh, the abdominal organs. And uh, we can see the diaphragm on the cranial aspect, which is uh, covering the right lobe of uh, the liver. We can also see the superficial leaf of uh, the omentum. Now this leaf together with the deep leaf form, the, from, form what is known as the supraomental recess which accommodates uh, the intestine. Actually it accommodates uh, the small in parts of the small intestines as well as uh, the large intestine. These include the jejunum, the idiom and the colon. And also these uh, two leaves, that's the superficial leaf and uh, the deep leaf of the omentum also form another space or structure known as the omento bus, which completely covers the, the ventral sac of uh, the rumen. On this uh, picture, we can also see the colon and jejunum, which are sitting in the supra omental recess. The visceral surface of uh, the rumen can also be seen, and also part of uh, the cranial duodenum with its sigmoid flexure can be seen there. We can also see the descending duodenum, which is uh, directed uh, dosocodally. 
in addition we can also see the chordal flexure of uh, the duodenum which is connecting into the ascending duodenum and then uh, we can also see the descending colon which is attached to the ascending colon by the duodenocolic uh, ligament so those are some of uh, the structures that can be seen on the right side of uh, the organs when they are removed from the abdominal cavity and placed in such a way that uh, they somehow approximately represent the way the situation would be in uh, real life The cranial descending part and uh, the caudal flexure of the duodenum are the only parts of the intestines that uh, are exposed when the peritoneal cavity is open from the right side and this is uh, in the paralamba fossa but the remainder of the intestine is usually concealed in the supraomental recess so it cannot be seen when the paralamba fossa is opened on the right side the descending duodenum and uh, the caudal flexure are attached dorsally to the mesoduodenum and uh, the descending part is also attached ventrally to the superficial wall of uh, the omentum. The accessory pancreatic duct enters uh, the descending duodenum about uh, 30 centimeters caudal to the bile duct uh, in the case of the ox. And in the sheep and goat, the pancreatic duct uh, joins uh, the bile duct. So these two in the sheep and goats will open as uh, a unit into the duodenum. And uh, the orifices of uh, the bile and uh, pancreatic ducts are normally on uh, papillae or thick folds. So they open on uh, some elevated structure which is in the form of a papilla or in some cases it could just be a fold. The jejunum is uh, the longest part of uh, the small intestine. It uh, forms numerous uh, closed coils arranged in a festoon around the border of uh, the mesentery. The jejunum uh, usually lies in the supraomental recess on the right side of uh, the rumen. It uh, occasionally can be found outside the supraomental recess and uh, this is called uh, to the left of uh, the ventral sac of uh, the rumen. The main function of uh, the jejunum is uh, absorption of sugars, amino acids and uh, also some uh, fatty acids. Now on the picture on your left can be seen uh, the jejunum with uh, its uh, characteristic uh, folds. We can also see the cecum, the proximal loop of uh, the ascending colon. We can also see the spiral loop of uh, the colon. And uh, we can also see the ilium which is attached to the cecum by the idiosico fold. So the very uh, unique characteristic feature of uh, the jejunum is that it is uh, thrown into these folds which form a festoon. And it's uh, easy to identify the jejun jejunum in the abdominal cavity for this reason. The ilium is uh, the terminal part of uh, the small intestine and it extends uh, from uh, the free edge of uh, the idiosico fold up to the idiosico orifice. Its cranial part is uh, closely adherent to the cecum and uh, the colon. It enters the junction of uh, the cecum and the colon at an oblique angle on the medial surface at uh, the ileocecal orifice. On the picture on your right, we can see the ilium extending from the termination of the jejunum all the way up to the ileocecal orifice. The ileocecal fold connects uh, the ilium and uh, the cecum. I will now talk about uh, the blood vessels of uh, the small intestine and I'll begin by looking at uh, the arterial blood supply then I move on to the venous drainage. The main arterial trunks that supply blood to the small intestine are the celiac artery and the, the cranial mesenteric artery and these are direct branches of uh, the abdominal aorta but of particular importance in terms of blood supply to the small intestine is of course the cranial mesenteric artery. Uh, let's look at the different parts of the intestine and where they receive the arterial blood supply from. So the cranial part of the duodenum receives its blood supply from the right gastric artery and also the right gastroepiploic artery. Then the descending part of the duodenum receives its uh, blood uh, supply from the cranial pancreatic duodenal artery 
while the ascending duodenum receives uh, blood supply from an artery which originates from the left side of the cranial mesenteric artery or from the midocolic artery. Then the genuinum is supplied by the jejunal arteries, which originate from the cranial mesenteric artery, which passes in a cave along the inner border of uh, the chain of uh, some elongated mesenteric uh, lymph nodes. So these lymph nodes, you see them lined up against the inner surface of, or rather the inner cave of uh, the jejunum. The jejunal arteries uh, pass across or through the lymph nodes. Then they divide and form arches which give off small branches which eventually end up getting into the tissue of the, the jejunum. Finally, the ileum is supplied by two arteries which are branches of the idiocolic and the cecal artery, both of which anastomose with the terminal branches of the cranial mesenteric artery. On the diagram on your right, we can see the cranial mesenteric artery which is the main trunk that provides the arteries that supply different parts of uh, the small intestine. So that is the cranial mesenteric artery being shown there. We can also see the idiocolic branch of uh, the cranial mesenteric artery shown by the arrow right now there. We can also see the collateral branch of the cranial mesenteric artery shown again by an arrow there. The jejunal arteries are seen here forming arches or arcades that uh, send branches to the jejunum. In terms of uh, venous drainage, the veins of uh, the small intestine are generally satellites of uh, the arteries. This means that uh, the veins usually lie on the side of uh, the arteries and uh, they usually bear the same names as uh, the arteries. This is the section where you can now evaluate yourself by answering some questions uh, that are based on the learning outcomes of uh, this uh, tutorial video. You have now come to the end of uh, this tutorial video on the anatomy of uh, the ruminant small intestine. Therefore, you should be able to identify and name the different parts of uh, the small intestine, explain the positions, directions and attachments of the various parts of the small intestine, explain the blood supply of the small intestine. Uh, so I trust you were able to adequately attempt the questions on the evaluation of uh, the learning outcomes. Thank you for watching and listening.